Hello nerds, uh, today we're looking at a tension example. Um, we have a 3.6 kilogram object falling off a table while tied to a 7.4 kilogram object that is resting on the table. If the coefficient of friction between the object and the table is 0 0.24, what is the acceleration of the objects? Uh, they have the same acceleration because they're attached by a rope. And secondly, what is the tension in the rope? So this is a standard kind of tension problem. We definitely want to start by looking at what forces we have on the objects. If we can write down the correct forces and understand them, then we'll basically be done all the hard work of this question because we can just follow our procedure from there using Newton's second law. So let's start by writing the forces on the problem. I'm picturing um, what would this look like in real life? Well this object would have a downwards force for sure because it's trying to pull the other object off the table. Uh, let's call that FG1 uh, because that's mass one, we'll label it FG1. Now when it's pulled downwards by gravity, tension will try to hold this mass upwards. The rope will pull upwards because it's being supported a little bit by this mass. Uh, this mass will slide off the table but it's heavy so of course it's going to pull on the rope a little bit. Now these tension forces are equal because the tension force within one rope is always equal. Um, so we're, I'm going to represent that with a little dash on both of them. Now the mass on the table, well it has a supporting force from the table which we call a normal force and it has a gravitational force downwards. Uh, technically I should draw these much bigger than the other gravitational force because they are larger forces, but they do cancel out. So they're not actually going to be a large part of this problem. Let's call that FG2 and FN2. Um, so those are bigger than FG1 because this mass is heavier, but they're, um, ba they're balancing with each other. Uh, lastly, we have a friction force here um, that is dragging on the table. As this mass slides off the table, friction will be holding it a little bit, but it will still fall off the table eventually. So we have here, I think to myself, what is the strongest unbalanced force? And the answer is down here. FG1 is the strongest unbalanced force. That's what we call our winning force. And secondly, we think what forces are opposing FG1? Well, only friction is opposing FG1. It's the only force pulling against the winning force. So that's our losing force. Now, for part A, um, to find the acceleration of the objects, we're going to have to look at the whole system. We're going to look at both objects together. So we're going to do what I call a winner's minus loser's statement. Um, so Newton's second law statement, F net equals MA. Well, we can represent F net with the winning forces minus the losing forces. So here we have FG1, we discussed as our winning force, and FF is our losing force. So that's the net force. The unbalanced force is the winning forces minus the losing forces. Now for mass, we're looking at the whole system, so we have to use both masses. So I'm going to say M1 plus M2, and that's times A. Uh, we're looking for A, acceleration, so I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by M1 plus M2. Now if we switch our left and right in our algebra here, we get A equals FG1 minus FF over M1 plus M2. Now let's, let's take a look at some of these forces here that we don't know, but I think we can find. So FG1 we know FG1 is, well, FG equals M times G, mass times 9.8, and we know M1 is 3.6. So this is equal to M1 times G, which is 3.6 times 9.8, uh, and that's equal to 35.28 newtons. So that is representing the downwards force FG1. And let's take a look at another component force here. Here's friction. Well, friction we know is mu Fn. 
is the formula for friction, but there's only friction on the mass on the table, which has Fn2. So let's look at Fn2 here. Uh, Fn2 is balanced with the gravitational force. So this is just going to be equal to mu times the Fg2. And Fg2 is equal to m, whoops, my pen cut out there, m2 times g. Okay, so this is all equal to 0 0.24 is the mu value given in the question. Uh, m2 is um, 7.4. And lastly, G is 9.8. So the total friction force on the mass on the table is equal to 17.4 newtons. Okay, so let's go back to our blue um, formula here. So we have A equals, let's put in all the numbers we know now. We have 35.28 is our winning force. We have 17.4 is our losing force, the friction. We have uh, 3.6 is our M1 and 7.4 is our M2. Therefore, we put all that in our calculator. We find the acceleration of both the masses, because they're connected by a rope, is 1.63 meters per second squared. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna leave a bit of space. I'm gonna change colors and we're gonna go to part B. So let's clear some of our, our work here. Um, for part B, oops, there we go. Part B says, what is the tension in the rope? Now within one rope, the tension is always constant throughout the whole rope. You can't have more tension on one side of the rope. That's not how tension works. And when we did our winners minus loser statement, our FNS statement for the whole system, tension actually canceled out because tension points in both directions. So in order to find the tension force, we need to change our perspective. Instead of looking at both the masses, we're going to look at just one mass. Now it doesn't matter which mass we pick, but I'm going to start by picking this one where tension is the winning force. So looking, ignoring the hanging mass completely, looking only at the second mass here we can see that Fg and Fn cancel. They balance with each other. Tension is pulling the block forward and friction is trying to resist. So tension is the winning force and friction is the losing force. So let's write an Fnet statement, a winner's minus loser statement for this, the block on the table. So Fnet equals Ma, that's Newton's second law. Well, F net, in this case, is the tension force minus the friction force equals M2 times A. Okay, so comparing this to our block, look at the formula, look at the diagram. I hope you can see that they are intimately connected. The tension force is winning in the diagram, and it's the first force in our formula. The friction force is losing in the diagram and that's why we've subtracted it from tension in the formula. Now if we solve this for tension, we will get Ft equals M2A plus FF. So this has come, I've added friction to both sides. And then we find Ft equals 7.4. The A, the A we found in our previous question and the friction we also found in our previous question is 17.4. And we find the tension force is 29.4 newtons. Now, if we had picked the other mass, if we had picked the hanging mass, which we call mass one, instead of the mass on the table, we would get a different formula for our F net statement for the mass one we would see that Fg1 is winning, Ft is losing, it's equal to M1a. Uh, if we rearrange and plug in our values, I'm gonna just do this quickly. You can check the work if you want, but I'm just making a point here. Uh, Ft would be M1g minus M1a, which is 3.6 times 9.8 
minus 3.6 times 1.63, uh, we would also get 29.4 newtons as our FT. So in both cases, we get 29.4. So it doesn't matter which mass you look at to calculate tension, but you do have to look at one mass instead of both of them at the same time in order to isolate the tension force. All right, that's all for this one. I, um, I'm going to post a challenging tension problem for you to check out after this. So if you're interested, take a look at the next video.